I've decided that I'm staying home today. I don't know when the last time I stayed home was. Do you know, Jose? Was it last Sunday or did I? I think I went there last Sunday, didn't I? You've gone there every day at some point. Pretty uh, sure. So I've literally gone to the the studio every day for the month of March. And maybe once. Maybe once I didn't. What day is it today? I don't even know. It's like the twenty. Friday. It's the twenty ninth today. So twenty nine days straight. I've been to the studio. I have not stayed home all day once. So I'm excited about doing that today. This, I sort of need a break. This morning while the kids were eating, I was just Googling like sky and clouds because I'm talking with the artist, right Millie? And just trying to come up with the perfect solution. And I, I want the um, background to be as realistic as possible. You see how they sort of like transition, like the sky, it transitions from like almost white and then up to like a darker shade of blue. So we're probably gonna do something like that. The reason it does that is because of course the earth is, is round. So as the further you look, the more clouds you see. So it's just interesting when you actually look at like images of the sky. It's a cloudy day out right now, so you can't really see a nice blue sky, but. Just coming up with sort of what it's going to look like. I just want it to look as realistic as possible. Maybe I'll put one of these in the background. There you go. This morning has just been like a bunch of housekeeping stuff. Not really in the house. Of course, I've spent some time with my children and family and all that and had some delicious breakfast and hung out. But as I was doing that, I was dealing with some behind the scenes stuff, which is like housekeeping of the renovation. There's just like so many different layers of the renovation. There's the actual physical labor of it all. And then there's also lining up the trades and making sure everything goes smoothly and according to a plan there and trying to keep the timeline, you know, reasonable so we can start to move the Lego in there. And then there's also just like the financial aspect of it and making sure all the ducks are in a row there because there's so many different like layers of that as well because just the way it's all like structured i don't want to get into it there's like the holding company and then there's the operation operating company which is brixie and then just making sure that you know any improvements made to the operation come out of the holding company and loans and this and that and this and that and it's just like oh my gosh keeping it all uh lined up with your spreadsheets and on the um the online banking aspect of it all and Dividing it from the different accounts and different credit cards and all this different stuff. It's It's mind-blowing. And then after that I uh, Came down here When the kids are up for nap now, they just went down for a nap and just put them down and Jose's gonna go grab some groceries And I'm gonna have them on the baby monitor, but while they're doing that I'm just like going through all of my inventory like all of the Lego that I have like put away for the future and sort of like relisting that on my sales platforms on whatnot and just making sure that that is all taken care of because I want to try and like, I still want to try and reduce this pile for when we go to the new studio. I call it the new studio, but when I get to the new studio, I don't really want to bring all of this stuff. I want to try and reduce that. And, and that's just going to help like pay for this massive expense that I've occurred here. Like it's just nuts. It keeps going up and up, but it's all good. It's, it's like investing in the business, which I think is cool. It's investing in the business, which is really cool because the business is Lego. So we're just going to have like a, a bigger spot for Lego. I've also decided that, uh, well, a bigger spot that's like really well put together over there. That's the goal. Cloud backdrop, mural, bigger Lego city that you can walk around, bigger displays, and a bigger like workspace. It's funny now that like I'm actually at the new place. Whenever I come down here, I'm like, man, like, I'm like claustrophobic. I'm like, how did I do this? I've built myself into a corner. Oh my gosh. There's so much space over there. And this, this room now feels very small and very full. And every time I come down here, I sort of get like anxiety. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what did I do? What have I done? Why did I like put these cabinets in the middle here? Why did I, you know, block in the Lego city? It's like so tiny. <laughs> And it's funny, it's, 
it's huge though. Like it's huge and it's full of Lego and I love it, but it's just like, it's a breath of fresh air over at the new place. So that's why I think once I'm done taking care of a bunch of stuff here, I'm actually going to head over there and uh, continue to work because I need to prepare for the mural artist, which is coming on, on Tuesday. Today, when I'm filming this video, it's Friday, Saturday, I've got a big day uh, related to like running a big live stream in regards to like an auction and stuff like that. And then uh, I want to try and ship all of every, all of that stuff. And then Sunday, I want to try and take the entire day off because it's Easter Sunday. We're going to have like an Easter egg hunt with the kids and we're going to go to my parents for dinner and the whole family's going to be there. So I'm going to try and take Sunday off and then boom, it's Monday. I've got to like prepare for the mural, mural artist who will be there. And I've still got to drywall mud some walls and then I've got to sand those walls down. So if I'm not going to go there tomorrow because I'm busy here and I'm not going to go there Sunday because I'm going to be busy with family stuff, then I'm going to go there Monday, but the drywall mud has to dry. So I literally got to go over there today and, and apply the drywall mud and uh, move the carpet tile and prepare for Tuesday because that's going to be here before I blink. So I'm, I'm like forced. I, I've got to go over there. I was thinking of bringing the kids, but there's just like so much dust and everything. And I don't think we can bring the kids. So once Jose gets back from doing her grocery shop shopping and the kids wake up from their nap and I'm done dealing with this stuff, we're going to head over there and, uh, and take care of some, some new studio renovations. So I guess I'm going to keep the, uh, the trend going here this month. <laughs> Too funny. Uh, it's not funny, but it's, it's just gotta be done. And, uh, it's just gotta be done. Yeah. And I'm, I'm excited about it. <laughs> Shazay's back from getting groceries. It's like, holy cow, <laughs> that's a lot of groceries, man. Would you put a lean against the house or something? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but in this day and age, you pretty much need to. At least in Canada, that is. And the funny thing is, is this is mostly for the kids. Like I will eat barely any of this in comparison to them. They eat a lot. I swear they eat more than me. They eat more than me, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys doing? You sharing food there? They've got little panini pizzas and strawberries for lunch. Oh. Hey, cuties. I hope I see you later. But Dad's going to go move carpet tile and patch walls. Okay, so have a good afternoon. Can you wave? Can you wave? Can you give me a high five? Okay, uh, that's good. Give me some skin, Mel. Give me some skin. Okay, good. Thank you. See you later. My first stop is actually Home Depot. I'm having a look at fire extinguishers. I need one for the studio. I have them at home, but none at the studio. Man, these things aren't cheap. Like $85 for a big one, $75 for a like medium one, and then like $33 for a mini one. Jose was like, you need to get three of them. It's like, really? Do I need to get three of them? I don't know. I'm thinking about this two pack here for 65 bucks, but still like that's crazy But I guess in the end if there was a fire and had a fire extinguisher It'd be worth spending the money on one. I Think <laughs> I think I'll go with the mini one then I can have like this up in the office and maybe this down by the back door or something like that I don't think I need three but two might do it uh, So the two pack is $65 or I could just buy a mini one 32 get a couple of those but then it's the same price and we got like a mini one and a medium one so i guess that's probably the best value something else i want to get is two programmable thermostats i need two because i have the furnace up front and the big radiant heater in the back a lot of people have been saying that i need to get like a smart one like a echo b because it has like this sensor and then it can give you like even distribution of heat and it's like, oh man, those are $330. I think I'm just gonna live with the thermostats that I currently have and save this huge expense for another day. Oh my gosh, I guess I don't need to get two smart ones, but my gosh, even to get one, $330. It would be nice to have the sensor up top though, right? Like that would be ideal. I think I'm just gonna live with what I have for now because that's pretty wild. When I was here the other day, I bought some dust bags for my shop pack. It just does a great job of containing all the dust, especially the drywall dust. It just gets everywhere. But I'm vacuuming over there and I was like, man, I need to buy something else for my shop pack. And that's a new nozzle. So the one that I currently have is like relatively small. It's even smaller than this and it's annoying. And the other one is like super skinny. 
and it doesn't really do a great job for actually vacuuming the floor efficiently. Like even this here, this one's for the wet stuff. It's got like a squeegee on it. But I think this one here is just like huge. Like look at that thing. That is a beauty. Can you imagine just vacuum up all the drywall dust with that? But it's $40. That's insane. I think I've got to get one though, just because it's going to be so much more efficient and do a great job of picking up all the drywall dust. Oh man, am I in these up as well? Check that out. It's an auto detailing kit. That would be pretty sweet for vacuuming up the car. Also this one here, the heavy duty cleaning kit. Look at all the attachments it comes with. But that thing's like as much as my shop back, $150 just for the attachments. That's a bit overkill, but maybe I'll have to get one of these one day because you can get all in the cracks and crevices of the vehicle. But for now, I've decided that this is all I'm gonna get from Home Depot today. You know what, everybody? I've fully embraced the expense of this place. Fully embraced it, I tell you. It's, it's wild. <laughs> I'm investing in the future. That's what I keep telling myself. You're investing in the future, Jordan. You're just upgrading this like old warehouse. It's, it's an investment. <laughs> and I, I honestly think there's some truth to that statement because we're gonna have a, a bigger studio. We can do more things. It's gonna give us space to expand, build crazier things out of Wego. We've got more height to work with. You just can't get too close to the heater, I guess. Uh, but we've got more wall space. We're gonna have the cloud mural. We've got all of this space right here for Lego art. And all of that space upstairs for like a couch and fridge and a chill zone. Like that's gonna be amazing. Also, we've got all of these cabinets here. Right now in the, the other Lego room, like all of the storage space is like underneath the tables other than like this small little Harry Potter closet underneath the stairs. I'm gonna make this like the chill zone over here, all the part storage over there. I mean like a couch here, some filming tables and stuff. So I just keep selling it to myself that I'm investing in the future or for the future. And that's sort of how the, uh, the basement renovation was too. It was really hard to swallow. Like really hard, I was like, oh, this is pretty crazy. But I was sort of investing for the future and then it all sort of worked out in the end. Now I'm sort of treating this, this place the same. But I think this here is what we would call the end game. You know, this is for sure the end game. I, I'm really excited for Tuesday because we're gonna start to, uh, oh no, I just realized I forgot my uh, Sawzall. Dang, I've been, yeah, sorry. Uh, I don't even remember what I was talking about. I'm excited for Tuesday because of the mural, I guess. And also, um, yeah, just the mural and the painting and all that. But I forgot my sawzall. Sorry, I had like a mixed, mixed thought there. What I wanted to do was chop up some of this conduit so that I could fit in my car. But I need a sawzall with my metal cutting blade to do that. And I literally forgot. I walked right by it in the garage. Come on, I got a nice Pakita uh, plug-in sawzall. And just chop that stuff up, no problem. Oh, well, I guess when I come here on Monday, I'll add that to my list. But yeah, I gotta move all this stuff here so we can prep for painting. All the stuff that's up against the walls has gotta be moved. And then uh, all of this stuff has to be moved as well. And then I've gotta grab some drywall mud and patch up all these holes. So when we start that mural uh, project on Tuesday, this wall is freshly sanded and everything's patched and everything's away from the uh, walls so we can drive the scissor lift around the perimeter of the room. So that's today's project, I better get to it. Well, that was a fail, everybody. I'm all excited about this huge brush piece. And then I realized that my shop vac doesn't have the right size tube for it. So this is not compatible with that. It's the same brand I thought it would be, but I just didn't even, didn't even think twice, I guess. Eh, it is what it is. I guess I'll return this or go buy a different tube. So using this attachment is going to be even more costly than $40. But look at that thing. It looks majestic. I've moved this stuff around countless times. I might have got the carpet tile a little bit early, but I got this stuff for like 80 cents a square foot. So it was a steal of a deal. I had to jump on it. Moving the carpet tile, it's pretty annoying, but originally I had it in the center 
to accommodate the electricians, and then I have to put it against the wall to accommodate the HVAC guys, and now I've got to put it back in the center to accommodate the painters. In addition to moving all that, I want to move the lumber, spare drywall, conduit, garbage, etc., and then just do a little bit of light sweeping as well. You know what? It actually looks a lot larger in here with that stuff condensed in the middle. When you have like doors and drywall and spare lumber leaning up against the side walls, it just makes this room look a lot smaller. So I went around and I swept up some of the major stuff, but I do need to vacuum this entire area. And I also need to wet mop it. Wet mopping is going to pick up all of that like dust and everything. It is just filthy, gross. But I do want to vacuum with the shop vac with the bag in because when you put the bag in, the air doesn't come blowing out this side. And when, when you shop back normally, it's sucking in there, but it's also blowing out air here and it just blows the dust into the air and the same effect with sweeping. So vacuuming with the bag and wet mopping is the ultimate solution. And maybe I'll do that on Monday when I'm here after I finish sanding this wall. Because right now I actually need to go around and patch all of these holes like I've been mentioning. And these holes were created after the original patch job was done because I removed that conduit that fed off this electrical box. You can see those holes, some of them are just massive all the way along this wall. There we go, I think that looks a little bit better. Now I'm a mudding pro. The walls are all patched up, now I just gotta wait for them to dry and then sand them down. In addition to patching these walls, I also patched some spots on the cinder block. I know it's weird using drywall mud on the cinder block, but there was some like big holes that needed to be patched and I just wanted it to look sort of fresh and get it ready for painting. Now, in addition to sanding that down on Monday, I've mentioned it a couple times, I am eager to vacuum this entire place and I wanna wet mop this entire place as well. And then I wanna haul out all this garbage. In addition to vacuuming the floor, I also need to vacuum these walls because there's a bunch of sawdust which is stuck to the walls and I don't really wanna paint over that. So it sounds like Monday is gonna be a very exciting day of cleaning this place up, but it's gonna transform the look of it. Once I get all the garbage out of here, vacuum it all nicely, and then wet mop this entire place and the walls are sounded down, it's gonna to start to come together. And then Tuesday, we're gonna start painting the mural. So things are really gonna come along together quite nicely. Oh man, I'm so excited about that mural. It's gonna be insane. So the mural is gonna actually start right there after this jut out and it's going to cover all three walls the painter has no problem painting the garage door which is excellent because i think that's going to be pretty sweet however he cannot paint the garage door track so we're still going to see the silver track but i think he can paint the silver part on the actual door just not the track part where the wheels roll which I don't think I'd want painted anyway, but I still think it's gonna conceal the fact that this is a warehouse because it's gonna be like this epic cloud background. Now, in regards to the clouds, I think it's just gonna be the clouds and I don't think there's gonna be like planes or birds or a sun or anything. It would be cool to build a giant snot ball and hang it in the corner and call it the sun. That would be so cool. But the planes and the, the trains, not trains, but the uh, animals and the birds and everything are gonna be Lego and that's gonna be in the Lego city. So I don't really want that painted. I do have to figure out what I'm gonna do with these natural gas lines. I don't think you can paint natural gas lines. Maybe what I could do is just buy some construction paper, like some big poster board from the dollar store and just wrap it around and have it go all the way up to the same height that might look pretty good and sort of blend in with the blue cloud background. Or I'll just research, whoopsie, I'll just research, blast you garbage, but I'll just research if, to see if I can actually paint those as well. I doubt you can though. I just wanna make sure that it's done correctly into code. Hey, I wanna talk about the Lego city a little bit too, because Stingsbricks was actually here the other day and we were discussing the project which involves constructing the new tables for the Lego city layout, specifically the designs that I came up with a long time ago when we were first looking at this place. You remember those designs? They were specifically designed to maximize the amount of space that we have in this place for the Lego city. I wanna future proof this space so I don't run out of space and I don't wanna fully develop something and then be like, oh no, I ran out of space. Now we need more space. Oh, I've got to redo everything. So I think like when I actually get around to constructing these table layouts, I want to make it the go big or go home scenario. But with that said, <laughs> 
It might be a little bit more cramped than I originally anticipated. This right here, the width of it is 29 and a half feet. And the city that I want to build, the tables that is, are 24 feet. That leaves us a whopping six feet of additional space. You divide that by two, you get three feet of additional space on either side. So I've laid out these uh, two by threes right here, and they're at the three foot mark. So this is what the walking space would look like around the city. The city would consume from this two by three, all of this space right here, to this two by three. However, of course, the tables would be split into sections. Uh, like I've mentioned in previous videos, we would have 70 inch tables because I can reach 35 inches. We'd have one table here. And then there would be four of those side by side. Those tables would be connected on either side and also in the middle with two by threes and then we would fill it in and then we have little access holes to pop up through and say hello. That would maximize the amount of space that we have in this new studio. The thing is, is can I live with the fact that that is only going to give me a 36 inch or a three foot walking space? For example, say this is a big mills plate, even though it's the vacuum, Am I going to be able to walk by here? I mean, I don't think a mill plate's going to have a big hose attached to it, but am I going to walk by here and be able to place it in the city or duck underneath the Lego city table and pop up to one of the access holes and place it in the Lego city? Now, of course, that's not a good representation. And <laughs> maybe this drywall sheet is a better representation. If this is like a giant mills plate, is this going to be enough room right here? It's a lot more room than we currently have because what I currently have is actually uh, 24 inches. So I actually only have two feet and this will be three feet, but it might be just a little bit too cramped. The issue is, is if I wanna uh, increase the size of this walking space, say by approximately 10 inches, that's approximately one base plate. I know a base plate is 10.04 inches, but it's just called 10 inches. If I want to increase that walking space to, or from 36 to 46 inches, so give us another 10 inches. Sorry, I'm working in inches, everybody. Give us another amount of space like that. That is pretty substantial, but that reduces the tables that I have on the, like the side running here from 70 to 60 inches, or seven base plates to six base plates, all the way down on either side. <laughs> if you can imagine how many base plates that is, that's like hundreds, maybe not hundreds, but probably a hundred because that's one base plate on that side and one base plate on this side running the full length. And it reduces these sections, which are actually when they're all, when all the tables are connected is normally 70 inches down to 60. So I need to really think about what I value more, more space in the Lego city wider table spans running down each side, or if I value 46 inch walk space versus 36. It's, it's a tough call. I keep talking about these tables running horizontally like this way, but then when I actually connect them using uh, more wood and lay the sheets that actually connect them running through the center and on either side, it creates 70 inch tables running lengthwise this way and also lengthways wise this way. But if I'm able, to, if I do reduce it by 10 inch, then this side here would only be 60 inches or six base plates. And that side over there would only be 60 inches or six base plates. And then the table that runs the full center would be 70 inches or seven base plates. So it's, I really don't know what to do. I really don't know if I should make it, you know, a, a 46 inch, walking space nearly four feet, or if I should make it a 36 inch walking space or three feet. It might be a bit tough when you're walking by with a huge, mo uh, like a huge mills plate. Like some of them can get this large if it's like a mountain or something. So yeah, like comfortably walking up through with a 36 inch, I'd, I'd only be able to walk through with a three base plate mills plate. So yeah, it's, uh, 
it's definitely something to think about. I don't even know if I'd want to make most plates larger than three base plates though. Like that is enormous. <laughs> when you have like a three base plate mill plate, like that's 30 inches. When you're, you have a, a monstrous plate that's like this big, it becomes a little bit ridiculous. So yeah, what would you do? Would you maximize the amount of space for Lego or would you maximize the amount of space, well not maximize it, but increase the amount of space for walking? That's where I wanna leave it today. You let me know what you think of that by commenting below. I know I went on, I went on a lot about inches there. <laughs> but it's coming down to inches in this massive place, which is um, a mass amount of space, I think 1,200 square feet. But still, you never know, I might fill it, right? If we fill it and run out, I'm gonna regret not making it big. You know, I might regret not making it or like maxing it out. So that's why I sort of wanna max it out, but I also wanna feel comfortable walking. Either way, I'm gonna think about that on the ride home and also for the next two weeks before we start building tables. Uh, please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned. Farewell.